the 2008 International Sportsman's Exposition. Uh, you know, there's, there's more seats. You can go ahead and sit down. There's more seats. You can go ahead and sit down. There's more seats. There's, you guys can sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there's more seats out there. You guys can sit down anytime you'd like. Hey, I never forget this side. I never forget a good side. So how you guys doing? No, I don't. I personally don't have a good side, but um, yeah, thank you, Kent. Thank you. Hey, you know, I'm one of those kind of guys. When I go out fishing, I, I it's difficult to go with all these techniques. There's a hundred thousand techniques. What do I buy? What do I do? I'm at this show here, the IC show, and I'm trying to learn more about how to fish. And you got all these pros putting all these different techniques together, and it kind of can get overwhelming. You know, we all can go out there and catch a lot of fish with a lot of different techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow down that field. All right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dissect it, make it a little simpler, and I like to make it to where, you know, average Joe goes out there and wants to fish, make it easy for him. So we're going to start off right off the bat, okay, with the buzz bait. Now, one of the key things that people, when I watch them throw a buzz bait, this is a persuader buzz bait. And the reason why I like to use a buzz bait that's made by persuader is because I want it easy. When you were a kid and you used to skip the rocks, you don't skip a round head, you skip a flat head. That means this is going to rise fast. Now, making it rise fast with the flat head, the persuader makes it simple and easy for you. Also, it's what we call a clacker. As it spins, it hits this side. Now, we've been throwing this for 30 years, okay? Used to be an old one called a walk and talk, an old brawly walk and talk. Now we've gotten to where they've got fancy uh, colors and they make a lot of noise. So by utilizing something simple for the average person, when I tell them you got high quality by Persuader and you got an easy bait. Now, when you're throwing out to that designated area, most anglers do this. Watch the bait. Don't watch me. Watch the bait. See how long it took for that bait to rise? Now with the same cast, I want you to watch me. The key is to get the bait up as quick as possible. When you're throwing that persuader buzz bait, although it has a flat head, you've got to get it up off the water. So when you throw it out, I don't even have to engage the reel. All I have to do is just lift my rod tip up. Now watch what I do with the rod tip only. I haven't even done anything to the rod. What I'm doing is I'm catching my rod tip as it falls. If I hold my rod tip up straight, I have to drop it, or I'm not going to bring the bait up off the water. If I don't do that, I'm never going to get the bait off. I'm going to miss that target. You've got to be able to put that bait on the target and keep it on the surface in that target. If you don't, you're going to miss that target. If your target spot is when you hit it and it sinks and you drive it up out of that target, that's your spot. You can hit the best spot in the world. The guy go, oh, look at that spot. That's a great spot right there. And you're getting ready to hit that spot. And you hit that spot and you're real. By the time you get it up, it's three foot away from that strike zone. Don't work. So, when you throw that bait out there, drop your rod tip and then lift. It'll bring that bait right up to the top that quick. Now, buzz baits are real simple baits to throw. It's the key on when you get this thing to the surface is if you don't want it just to make the same noise over and over and over again. You don't want that clack, 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 clack. Because that bait, that fish is going to go... <laughs> Fat fish don't look at look at I, I, we're looking at people in the club here. You know what I'm talking about? You're in the club, you're in club oh you got some club members right. You like the president. Guys, we go out for burgers, we're not going out, oh I would like a sprig of lettuce, please, you know, just wrap that around the uh nah. I want the steak, the potato, yes, blue cheese on a salad, and why don't you bring the pie right now? All right? 
That's what you were doing here. We're throwing the bait out there, so we're convincing Mr. Bass. By doing that, is we want to make that bait be enticing. By doing that, we want to make that bait go clack, 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 by rotating your wrist quicker, retrieving. So I throw it out there. As I'm retrieving, I'm going to speed up and then slow it back down, giving the illusion that it's injured because in a, an injured fish is going to get eaten. I don't want to just throw it out there. Remember, when you're out there fishing, the most irritating sound on the water is you all we know what that is. That's that jet skier. That's why they circle, you know, after you shoot them. There's a reason for that. Now, that bait is simple. When you're using that Persuader Buzz Bait, they actually sell those here and there. If you've got any questions, you can ask me about them. Make it easy on yourself when you're talking buzz baits. Now, spinner baits are a subsurface bait. This is a cool bait. There's spinner baits all over the plate. Everybody makes a spinner bait. However, in the market, we're all looking for something to add. This spinner bait has an E chip on it. If you haven't heard what E chips is, it's a, it's a sound wave that strikes a ball inside the water and it gives off an electrical charge and that electrical charge gives just like the same exact sound and, and vibration of fish getting fed upon, bait fish. So every time you twitch that spinnerbait, that ball hits each other. Persuader is hooked up with the e-chip. For me, the e-chip gives me one more link over the next guy. My spinnerbait has one more additive than the other guy. Simple again. You're not going to just swim that bait from here to there. Look at the difference. If I just throw it like this and reel it, the bait just flows through the water. Although it looks good, it's just swimming. Now, if I twitch my wrist, it opens up and flares, giving it the illusion that it's injured. So when you're throwing these baits, by twitching that wrist, it gives it that reaction. Now, Persuader did this to the spinnerbait, but they also put it on a jig. So now when you throw that jig out there and you lift it up, it sends that charge in the water. We want that illusion that that fish wants an easy prey. That's what you got to trigger those bass to eat. Don't just throw the bait out there. If you throw the bait out there and reel it back in, I call you guys chuck and winders. You're just a guy throwing it out there, reeling it back in. You're not going to catch that many fish. And if you're not catching fish, you're definitely not catching fish. Now, who made that bait that I just talked about? Who said that? I have a buzz bait for that gentleman right there. Good catch, sir. You, you don't play professional ball, do you? Yeah, I, I, I didn't think so. Now, the e-chip by Persuader is put on a spinnerbait and a... Who said that? You said that? You don't play football either, do you? Oh, man. Here, sir, I'm going to throw this down to you because if you miss it, you have to give it to the guy behind you. All right? All right. You know what the rules said. There you go. See? See? Now, because you're that nice... This spool is yours. Don't even try to catch it, because I'm going to laugh if you drop it. Don't even try to catch it. Watch. All right, now go pick it up. All right, let's get, give this guy a round of applause. Huh? What, a, what an honorable man. He can't catch, but he's honorable. All right, let's keep moving on. Now, the Persuader Bait, you can get over there at Fisherman's Warehouse. Hive's got them. We got Denise over here, Coyote. You can get them at all the different locations. I try to tell you guys stuff that you guys can get at your local stars here. So that's what we're going to do. Now, a couple new baits out on the market. I want you guys to see. Take a look at this one. You might have seen this, and you might not have. Fred Rabanis from California is fishing the Elite Series, and he worked with this bait. Some of you might not have seen this bait. It's called the Rumba. Take a look at this bait in the water, guys. Woo -hoo -hoo! 
They're saying when you buy it, it comes out with a CD with music. So, you know. Hooks are sharp. The rumba comes in multiple colors. This one is their hot fire tiger. You can wake it on the surface. You can run it below the surface. I got to use it this winter and I never caught a fish on it. But I'm waiting till the spring hits. That is going to be a hot bait. Brand new on the market, guys. Take a look at the rumba. Why don't you guys take a look at that? I'm trying to go over as many things as I possibly can. Whew, look at that. Furbit the frog. Not Kermit, Furbit. This is made by Optima. It's a fur frog. What makes this one unique over other frogs, this one actually has rabbit fur on the feet. So what happens is, as it's moving in the water, take a look at the legs. They're continuing to move. So when you're twitching, you can make those legs move. They're continually move the whole time. So not only when you're throwing it out there and you move it a couple times, you can just let it sit there and the legs is doing like this. Coaxing Mr. Bass to come over and play. It also has a spinner in the back. So if you're worried about getting it hung up in the weeds, you don't get it hung up in the weeds. You just don't get it hung up. And I remember how old you were when you were young? An old guy just walked by, you know. Hey, I used to fish. So the furbit is an excellent style bait. If you haven't seen the furbit, you can walk it. You can put it over top of anything else. It's pretty new on the market. Guys, take a look at this for a bit. You guys see it? Here, another loop, okay? You guys all saw it? Good. Excellent bait. All right? It's one of those baits that when you guys go throw it, you guys will catch fish on it. Make it simple, stupid. When I used to fish a long time ago, oh, it was like 100 years ago, I used to fish with a guy named Ron. He was a crankbait fool. And if he had that crankbait, he, he would probably have more teeth. But right now, you know, there's, he didn't, you know, he lost a lot of them during the war. Every pro here is talking about swim baits, right? Everyone. There's swim baits everywhere. This is the easiest one. This is like no brainer, all right? I got a new fin with rod here. I got the Revo reel. And this is the Optima AC Minnow, okay? It is what we call a weight bait. Lots of big fish. It's simple throw. It's not that expensive. When you throw it out, hits the top of the water, and all you're going to do is you're going to swim it back. You want to make it look like it's a snake. That side to side wobble. When you throw this bait out there, this is what you're going to hear. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da it happens. And then you'll see this wing boil up behind it. Woo! Then you're swinging back on him. By throwing that bait out there, just that slow roll. If you're one of those persons that just are, you know, I don't have that energy like you young bucks, this is the easiest bait. This is the easiest bait. You just throw it out there and wake it back. You catch a lot of large fish. Remember, I talked about it earlier. When you're out there and you want to eat, you're serving up steak right here, guys. You're not serving up little, like a little head of lettuce. This is steak. That's, that's filet right there. Real simple to throw. The more difficult ones, now this is an Optima, and they have it here at the show. These are the harder ones because they're what we call subsurface baits. This is a Titan. These are what we call, if you stop and turn around, you'll get it hung up on the bottom, that costs you money. That's what we call these. So, these will sink. So, you have to learn what the depth they're going to be swimming at. The Titan is an extremely easy bait to throw. And again, it's not that expensive. It's not like a 50 or a $70 bait. They're very inexpensive. You throw it out there. It's got a weedless hook on the top. You can throw it in around the trash, make it real simple for you. 
This is also made by Optima. They've been making these baits for years. They're one of the first on the market to make swim baits. They've been making them for years. Simplicity. Don't get too much involved with swim baits. You bring a tackle box out, it'll be a thousand dollars before you know it. So some of you guys going, yeah, I know. Wife's going, hey, you going fishing? No, nope, I'm just collecting more baits. Simple. Don't make it. Now, don't make it hard on yourself. Throw it out there. It's a slow moving style bait. Swim the bait slow and you'll do well. Just slow roll the bait. Now, when they eat that bait, you'll feel that tick tick. Wait till the rod loads up. When the rod loads up, you got him. But remember, when it hits it, He's eating it, okay? So give him a little time. It's a big meal. Give him a little time and then stick him. But you've got to feel that fish. <coughs> people use spinning rods here. How many people use spinning rods? You can catch bass on spinning rod, guys. You've seen the techniques. You can catch big bass on spinning rods. The problem is when most people are throwing spinning rods, they, they're told that you can't catch a lot of big fish, but you can. I've got a bait here that's one of my favorite baits. If you guys just like to go out and catch fish, this is a gulp, Berkeley gulp minnow. And the color is smelt. Look at this color in the water, guys. Look at that little minnow. That is cotton candy right there, guys. That fish sees that little smelt. Now, gulp stinks. So don't open up your wife's car. I'll tell you right now, or you'll be in trouble. This little bitty worm has so much resemblance to the food source that those fish eat. Any body of water, any lake that I fish all over the state of California, I catch fish on it. It's real simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to throw it. <clears throat> Just wiggle that bait, make it look like a little shad in the water. Bass will smell it, start wandering over, pick it up, woo, set the hook. Now, watch me guys, watch me. Now everybody watch me? This is what I see when I go out fishing. Watch my rod tip. Oh, I got a bite. Hey Frank, look. I got a bite, Frank, look, look at my rod. What? Watch. Oh, there he goes again. Oh, he hits it again. I'm going to nail him. Oh, dude, he ain't biting. Fish don't have hands. When he puts it in his mouth, set the hook. All right? When you feel the tick tick, well, oh, oh, let's just back up. Let me explain fish to you, all right? The fish has two things. He eats it, he swallows it, or he spits it out, all right? So here he goes. He sucks it in. That's bite number one. That's bite number one. The other bite you'll feel is the fish, when it's true crusher plates, crushing the baits. That's that tick, tick. So if you feel that tick, tick, set the hook. And if you don't, this is the third bite you'll feel. Then you look at yourself and you go, oh, well, yeah, they were biting today, but uh, I didn't do that well. They were short biting it. And uh, got several bites today, honey, but, you know, we just couldn't get them in the boat. You're laughing because you, you, hear, you hear it all day long. Hey, with a fish bite. Oh, dude, I got lots of bites. They, you know, they were biting weird today. No, they were eating it, and you were slow. Let's just admit it. All right? When they bite it, tick, 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 tick. That's kind of a thing like set the hook. Oh, set the hook. If you don't. You will have wished you did, and then you will be coming home going, How's the fishing today? Oh, it was good. Fishing was good. Catching, it was slow. Fishing was good. Now, with any light line style fishing, the least amount of movement, the better you're going to be. If you want to catch more fish, don't sit there and make it look like the bait is on like steroids or something like that, okay? We're not throwing Bobby Bonds or Barry Bonds' hooks out. No, I'm, I'm, you know. 
No steroids on this earth. Just let it sit there. It'll permutate that water with that gulp. It'll just, they'll smell it, and they'll go, hey, let's go take a look. Wiggle a little bit, let it sit. They won't be able to handle it. It's real simple. The technique of the drop shot or any of the small techniques with, is easily done. This is a new head it's made by the Japanese. It's been doing real well. It's coming out here to the west coast. It's made, it's called a Zappo. You rig it up wacky style, gives that look of a worm of wacky style. It's got a tungsten head to it. When it hits the bottom, it gives a great look to it. I've got it rigged up with the Berkeley worm. The fish see that, it doesn't get hung up. It looks like a real worm on the bottom. And I'm using that power bait worm. I'm telling you, it works extremely well. Extremely well. It's made by Zappu, a Japanese company. How many people use spinning rods? Raise your hand. How many people get that big backlash? The spinner rods, you open it up, the line goes... You liars! You liars! You bunch of liars, you guys! You do? Come here! How many people get a backlash with the spinning rod? Yeah, now we're talking! Yeah, who, who over here raised your hand? You let, raise your hand here, sir? Good, good. Why are you guys catching them? You guys couldn't. All right. Two things. When you use a spinner rod, I have to teach you this. It's very, very important with a spinner rod. When you're throwing a spinner rod, a couple things. When you cast it out, any way you cast it, I want you never, ever, 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 ever do this again. Watch me. See what I just did? Don't ever do that again, because it flips the line over, making a loop right here. And you got a little loop right here, oh, I'll get it out next cast. Phew. Stuck right here. Big old pile of line right there. Now you're laughing, see? Oh, that never happened to me. No. So, we're going to stop that. We're not going to want you guys to flip that bale over like that. The other thing we don't want you to do is when you do that, okay, when you flip that bale over, it causes number two problems. Watch the lure in the water, guys. Watch the lure when I flip the bale over. Watch the lure. You see that thing move? It twists. I'll do it again. It moves. It sends a signal down the line and pow! Slaps that fish right in the face. So what we want to do is stop that. So when we throw that line out there, okay, we're going to flip that bale over and then line it up and then reel it in. Now, don't do this with the cat in the room when you're practicing it, right? Bad deal. You know, especially if you got a hook. It isn't that good. Not good. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Open the door, honey. <laughs> I got good pound cast. All right. Now, how many people use a bait casting rod? How many people hate bait casting rods? A lot of you guys, huh? You know, if, if you're sitting over here in this stand over here, if you're, if you're standing over here, I'm going to show you how to use a bait casting reel. Walk right over there, stand in these stands over here. And I'll wait. I got time. Walk right over there and get a seat. That's luring somebody. I like that. Walk right over there. Who's my helper? I need a helper. Ron, you want to help me? Ron, want to grab that rod right there? Is your name Ron? Yeah. Good. 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 You got that? Watch that guy just take off running with my rod. You got this one now. You got it? Now. I want you to walk on the other side, around over there.
You're doing good. You're doing real good. I, I've seen the professionalism of you, and you're doing good. Now, what we're going to do here is this tank right here is a great backdrop. Oh, you're good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to give you something, buddy. You're good. I'm telling you. This is the part I like. Watch this, guys. See these people over here? Watch this. Guys going, man, this guy is a freak. All right. Now, this is a brand new E-chip. When we're, when we're demonstrating, we don't use brand new E-chips on the cement. How many people, when you're casting and throwing out there, you don't want to tie because it takes too long? That would be me. That's my quick knot. It's done. If anybody wants to learn that, I'll teach you that one, too. Now, most anglers, when they buy a rod and reel, now, this is an Abu Garcia, 4600. Fenwick pistol grip. Simplicity is what I call my putter. Short distances. I can take this and put it right on the target wherever I want. So I can put it anywhere I want. In this short quarters, I have seen this more times than none. You're walking through the area. Pow! Five bucks. That's what that was, five bucks. Now, the key is, when you're throwing a bait caster is, the key is not doing this. Just got out of the ISC show. Bought myself a brand new rod and reel. Look at that. Pretty, huh? Go ahead. Say it. It's pretty, huh? You want to touch it? No. Just bought it. How far can you throw it, Randy? Oh, dude. You're all, well, I'm going to show you how far I can throw it. Randy, you going to throw it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to throw it. Hey Frank, you got a pair of scissors? That's what happens. You cannot throw the rod overhand. What happens is the speed of your hand is quicker than the reel. So when you stop here to here, the reel continues to go. For you guys, it's a backlash. For me, it's a professional overwind. So I'll let you guys know that. There is a difference. When we throw this, we learn a couple different ways. We learn this way. This is called an inside and route. All I'm doing is rotating my wrist, making a circle. When I make a circle, it just comes off the spool. Okay? That's all I'm doing is making a circle. Okay? That's all I'm doing. Now, to do that, I want everybody to stick their hand out in front of me. Everybody put their hand out. Go up, out, and around. Back in the 1930s, we were allowed to walk behind somebody. We do that. This is a position you'll be in. All right? And you got a $50,000 bond. I'm not sure what that's all about. Okay. But all we're doing is making a rotation. You have to what we call load up the rod. It's the parabolics of the rod. By utilizing the parabolics of the rod, by loading it up, you have to utilize the rod. It's not the strength, it's the rod. You can do this in any way, shape, or form. You can do it this way. Sneak up on those fish, all right? Now, all those different techniques, by rotating your wrist and loading up the rod, is what you want to do. Every one of these techniques, by going up, out, and around. So we're gonna try that one more time. Now, back in the 70s, sir, remember the robot? Okay, we outlawed that. Now we're gonna do a little smoother. Instead of doing it like this, we're gonna do a little smoother, okay? We're going to go up, out, and around. So go ahead and do that. Up, out, and around. 
making a revolution. Watch the rod tip. That's as simple as that. If you do that underhand cast first, you will catch more fish. Because you guys know. You guys are walking down to that place and there's that tree. That overhanging tree that sits in the water and the water's right here, the water, you know, you're going, dude, if I could get it underneath that tank, oh, gee, me, if I could get it underneath that, there's a bass step. Oh, I'm t oh, she, and you go, <laughs> and the tree looks like Christmas. It's got bombers, rebels, some old ones, an old curled up worm, it's all rotted out. That's the tree. You have to be able to throw it underhand. By throwing it underhand, it's loading up the rod, using the parabolics of the rod. Now, flipping. We've heard of flipping. How many people here heard of flipping? How many people flip? Not going down the freeway. How many people flip? Same people. Yeah. All right. Mr. D. Thomas, the inventor of flipping, is like this, pretty much in a nutshell. What this does, I want you to look at my back. Look at my right arm. Look at my left arm. I used to do this way all the time. Look at what happened. Look what happened. Okay? You will extend one arm longer if you continue to do that. All right? Now, what I have worked on, worked on, and worked on is utilizing the rod. The rod has parabolics. When you see a guy fishing, he goes, man, I love fishing. Now, some of you are laughing and some of you ain't. It's really bad when you see a guy with a spinning rod like this. The rod is made to bend one way. When you put eyes on the one rod with the bait caster, it's made to bend this way. Okay? You have to be able to do that. Use a rod correctly. So this one does not go like this, for just for you people that are playing at home. Wrong. Right. All right? So now, watch what I do just by rotating my wrist. My palm is up. My palm is up, and I'm going to do this. Watch what my rod tip does. Look at what I do. Look how I load up that rod. Look at my right elbow. Look at my hips. Look at my left arm. Look what that rod tip's doing. It's making a small circle. Now, I'm going to get a little more line. Can you imagine, for you people over the age of 30, because I ain't saying 40 or 50 because I'm in that bracket. At the end of the day, you're all tired. You go, God, I fished all day. I'm tired. Look what I'm doing, guys. Watch my right arm. The energy is developed by my wrist. This is not the Ginsu, the matching carving knife, but what? There's more. If you order right now, all I'm doing is loading up the rod, guys. Look at this. Most anglers don't do this. My body, I fish six days a week. 226 days last year. 226 days I'm on the water. I'm not tired. I'm not in good shape like some of you guys are. Maybe not. You young bucks right there, you guys are in better shape than I am. When I chased after you the other day when you stole my rims, remember that? I never did catch you. You smile. That's right. You better smile. Put away the gun, though. <laughs> yeah, I do want it back. So, look at my wrist. You're saying, well, what does that do, Randy? Watch. Remember the old flipping technique? Up, out, to come down. Up, out, to come down. Now, I rotate my wrist. As I pull the bait in, I rotate it. The bait parallels the ground less than six inches. Imagine the splash. Imagine the splash, guys. So you can be walking down the bank, hitting your targets. Oh, you think I'm going to hit you? No, see, there was one guy I hit him. I told him the eye would grow back. All right, it's not, and the case is still pending. <laughs> Left leg, right leg, on your foot, the other foot. Look at my right arm, guys. 
Look at my right arm. Okay? Oh. Oh, man, I had a good one on right there. For you guys that were, couldn't see from that angle, look at my right arm. I'm utilizing my wrist where I need it to be. I had a nice one there. Toe fish. Rotate that wrist. Now, that's flipping. Pinching is using, utilizing the same concept with the rod. Everything I do is with no energy. For physical energy, all the energy is in a rod. It's not a special rod. This is an HMG Fenwick, about 129. HMG Fenwick. Rebo reel, phenomenal reel. One of the best on the market. Ask anybody, it's the number one selling reel on the market right now for bass fishermen. It's the easiest reel to use. Comes in multiple price ranges. Excellent reel. You can utilize without any type of a pushing or reacting. The rod and a reel by you rotating your wrist will make it work. Now, flipping you saw, pitching. I rotate my wrist, the distance I get. The quicker I rotate my wrist, the faster and farther the rod will go. So now I got my rod in my hand. I hit that leg every time. I'm creeping up that leg and pretty soon he's going to move. Or I'm going to hit in that efficient that brush pile. Uh, I don't fish for carp. <coughs> I want everybody to put their hand out like this. Say these words. Alms for the poor. Alms for the poor. Say these words. No, I like those. <laughs> now, everybody put their hand out again. Now. This is what I do not want you to practice. I don't want you to practice this. If you can cast that fast, fish the tour. I want you to do this. Watch me. Now, dude, dude, that was good. Stand up. Stand up. Now, I know we're close, close to the bay. The other side, you know what I'm saying? Do that. Oh, dude. <laughs> you, you, don't, you live on this east side, don't you? Okay, you live on that west side, I'll be talking to you a little bit differently. It was perfect. The man rotated the wrist this way and rotated it out. I want to show you this in slow motion, why that hand motion is so important. Watch me do it in slow motion. I'll speed it up for some of you guys because that might have been a little slow for some of you. Watch when I do it slow. Watch. Watch the bait. See the bait wanted to make an arc. I'll do a little faster. It wants to make an arc. There's the circle. It wants to rotate out. Why? Because I'm doing that gentleman did. I'm doing this. Now if I do it real fast, watch the energy I develop out of the rod. Just the energy. Now. I'm sitting here. I'm standing right here. There's a tree up here. I don't have a $50,000 Skeeter bass boat like we all should. Walking down to my local lake, I got the rod in my hand and I'm trying to get to the trees and I can't cast this way. I can't cast this way. I can't cast that way. You trout fishermen, I learned this while trout fishing. I walk out there and I do this. It's right there. It's right there. You're, it's, it's right in front. I don't have a problem. And it's straight every single time. I don't have a problem. You're doing it in a direct line. Well, you know, you've been doing it for years. No, I learned this yesterday. I'm a fisherman, guys. Believe me. Everything I'm teaching you is you can learn this by just rotating your wrist and taking the time. The hardest thing you're going to have is you go back to your old habits. It's going back to your old habits. That's the hardest thing you're going to have a problem with. Rotating your wrist will make your job so much easier. Shoulder won't hurt anymore. Back won't hurt anymore. And you won't be doing one of these. Oh, man, my lower back's killing me after throwing all day. I tell you, that's what happens. Remember, it's the magical stuff that I have in my hand. If you don't have the magical stuff, what type of reel? 
Who said that first? You said it first? It's because of the hair. I like you already. One of my bosses has hair like that, so I like him. That's for you, sir. That's that new line. Automatically, when you put that line up, that's that new trilene, fluorocarbon line. You put that in the wall, fish jump in the boat. They don't even care. They don't even fish. Whose rod is this? Oh, dude, you guys are good. Who makes who makes all this gear and puts it all together for you guys? Who said that? You said, what would you say, sir? I didn't hear you. I ran out. Sorry, sir. Just teasing, man. You're going to get the best line in the world. This stuff is just great. All right? Now, a couple more minutes. Remember what I said. Here's the worst feeling in the world when you grab your rod. People ask me all the time, do you use this pistol grip? You bet I do. Because when I'm using short distances, I don't want this. Oh, dude. Look at this backlash. I don't want this. Here you go, fix that. Okay, I don't want to deal with that. See, I don't want that. Because if you slam it like that, you're going to have those problems. Make it simple. Use the rod to your advantage. You, you done with that? No. Well, let me know when you're done, you know, because I only got it like another 10 minutes. <laughs> Rotate it. Use the energy of the rod. Use the force. All right? So, real simple. When you're using the tackle and the techniques I taught you, you get that done? No. Oh, you got it all fouled up, dude. Oh, dude. Yo, he's going to get his glasses out. You are going to help me. Thanks, bud. I think Kent Brown did this. The key is, with all backlashes, they're not that bad if... If you can get them out. And if you get lined for free. All right? Simple. Either way, I knew a guy that used to play professional football. The problem he had, he was always good, he was a punter. Okay, so he never used his hands. So what he would do, he'd put it on the top and he would go with it. So he would do like that. It was just easier for him, okay? <laughs> when you go up to those bass and you're going, oh, okay, I'm going to sneak up to those fish. Hey, I'll tell you what, those bass are sneaky. you got to get them where they get them. Practice, practice, practice. We practice football, baseball, hockey, soccer. What don't we practice? Fishing. We go fishing. We don't practice it. You have to practice everything in life. You practice fishing, you'll get better and better and better. It doesn't matter what size reel you have, what size rod. They all work the same. Parabolics, guys. Rotating that wrist out there. My name is Randy Pringle. I go by The Fishing Instructor. You can go to my website, thefishinginstructor.com. i got a great website. Lots of videos that I've done on westernbass.com. This one right here, some of you guys will be on westernbass.com. So if you go to that website, there's a gentleman in the back. He is filming you right now. So if you are in trouble with the law, do not turn around. I appreciate you guys. You guys want to talk to me? I'll be over at the Berkeley booth. Thank you guys very much. All this stuff out. We're at the tackle stores. They're all carrying it. Thank you very much. My name is Randy Pringle.